Hey guys, welcome back to my Linux Commands for Beginners series. And in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to do some basic file management. In the previous video, I showed you how to create text files and edit them. We use Nano and Vim. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to move those files around. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so just to recap, if I do ls-l for the long listing of the ls command, you can see that I have these text files right here. We know they are text files because they have a hyphen there at the very beginning, the very first character. And we have four of them, and those files right there are the files that we used when we were walking through the text editors in the previous video. So in this video, I'm basically going to show you how to move those around. Let's start with test2.txt. I already showed you you can use the cat command to see what's inside that file. We can see it simply has the name of my YouTube channel there. That's all it has. So I'm gonna first show you how to copy files. So what I'm gonna do, and again, just to get back on the screen the list of files, I'm going to cp for copy, and I'm gonna copy test2.txt. So that's an argument to the, the cp command, but I need to give it a name to copy it to. And I'm just gonna call it newfile.txt. I'm gonna copy test2.txt to newfile.txt. And we can see that we also have newfile.txt here as well. That was not there before. Now let's go ahead and use the cat command. We see that it has the name of my YouTube channel. And if I did the same thing against test2.txt, we see that it has the same content. Now another command that we can use to do essentially the same thing, just kind of tell us whether or not a file is different, is the diff command. And I could do new file.txt and then test2.txt. So I'll press enter and there's no output. The diff command will tell you if the files are different. Since I copied one file to the other, of course they're not different, they contain the same text. And to take another look at our files here, what if I wanna get rid of new file.txt? How would I do that? So what I wanna do is use rm for remove and I'm gonna do the name of the file I wanna remove and I'll press enter. And of course, it's gone. And I could do the same thing to test two. And we can see that we only have three files. So rm is short for remove. And of course, you have to be careful with that because if you use the rm command to remove a file, it's gone, you can't get it back. I know that goes without saying, but you, know, you might think of something like the recycle bin or the trash bin, depending on what your current operating system is, where you can retrieve files that you've removed, you can't do that on the command line. If you delete something, it's gone. And of course, you can use file recovery tools to get it back, maybe, but it's gonna be really hard. So basically, be careful of the RM command because it's very powerful. You can remove something that you probably didn't want to. So at this point, I showed you the CP command, which is copy, that copies a file from one name to another, just makes a duplicate. I also showed you the RM command, which will remove a file. But what if I wanted to move a file from one place to another? So to take another look at the files that we have, we have these three text files, test3, test4, and test file. I'm going to move them somewhere else. So first of all, what I'll do is I'll just do a mkdir to make a new directory, and I'll call it notes. And ls-l, we see that we have the directory notes. So I'm gonna use the, the move command, mv, to move these text files into that directory. So I'll do mv, and then the name of the first file, and then I'm going to move it into notes. We can see test3.txt is not there. Now if I do ls against notes, we can see that the file is actually in that directory. Now I only have two text files here, so I can actually move them both by doing mv star.txt, which basically the star represents anything, and then it has to end in .txt, but what comes before that, the asterisk basically means it could be anything we have these two files that meet that criteria. So I'm gonna move both of those files into the notes directory, and those files are now gone. So if I go into notes, 
we can see that those three files are actually there, but I can move them back. And one way I could do that is the same way I would do cd dot dot to go back a directory. I can actually do mv test file dot txt dot dot. The dots there, the two dots means the you know one level above. So I'm in the notes directory right now, which is a subdirectory of home, which is shorthand designated by a tilde here. So if I use dot dot, it's going to move the file from here back to the previous directory, which is actually this one. So I'll go ahead and press enter. And just to give you an idea, if I do pwd, you see I'm at home j notes. This is where I am right now. And by moving it to dot dot, I'm moving it to the directory that's this way in the string here. So of course, like I mentioned, the tilde is just a shorthand for slash home slash j. So if I do ls dash l dot dot, which is just doing a long listing of the previous directory, we do see that the file was moved back there. In much the same way, I could do mv dot dot and a forward slash test file dot txt. So that means take the file that is one level behind and it's called test file dot txt and move it to, well, where do we want to move it to? Well, we could do a single dot. A single dot refers to the current directory. So I'll press enter. And now we'll see that test file dot txt is in my current working directory, which again is slash home slash j slash notes. If I do just to you know drive this home, ls dot, it's the same as if I did ls dash L or whatever it happens to be, you have the same output because like I mentioned, ls dot means your current working directory, which is this one. We don't need to tell it the directory we want to list if the directory we want to list is the one we're already in. So effectively ls and ls dot are the same thing. The dot isn't necessary because that just refers to where we already are. So in this case, when I use the move command to move a file that's behind to a single dot, I'm basically just saying, please move this file to where I am, which actually is in the notes directory. So how do I rename a file? Again, I have these three files right here. I wanna go ahead and rename these. But what command would we use to do that? And actually, it's the same command we use to move files from you know, one directory to another, the mv command. There's no dedicated rename command here. This is the command that we actually use. So I could rename test 3.txt to abc.txt. And what that's going to do is take the file that's called test3.txt, and then it's gonna rename it to abc.txt. We can see that it did in fact do that. We have to be careful with that though, because what happens if we do mv abc.txt, and we wanna move it to a new name of test4.txt. You can see right here, test4.txt, that already exists. So what's that going to do? I'll press enter. And in this case, it's asking if I want to overwrite that file. In your case, it may not ask you anything. It might just simply do it. I have some protections in my settings that basically gives me some confirmations that you may or may not have on your end. It might have just copied that or actually moved that without any confirmation at all. In my case, I'll just say yes. And if I do a listing here, we can see that abc.txt is gone. We only have the other two files. So basically what happened is we took this file, we renamed it, we renamed it to test4.txt, which is already there, which effectively means we've replaced this file with this file, but with the same name. We just basically overwrote it. So that's just something to keep in mind that you wanna be careful with the move command or any of these commands, for example, just to make sure we're not overwriting something that we really shouldn't have or didn't want to. So there you go. Just wanted to show you guys some basic file management. I showed you how to copy files, move files, and rename files. So go ahead and you know just play around with that. Create some files, you know, use the touch command, use nano, vim, or whatever text editor you want. Create some files, change the names, move them around, create some directories, and it's pretty easy. So I think you'll get the hang of it pretty quick. So. Um, hope that was helpful for you guys, and I will see you in the next video as soon as I have that uploaded. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. 
If you want to help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.